Now our perception of sound is called hearing, and our perception of frequency is called pitch. So high pitch is high frequency, low pitch is low frequency. Now what I have right here, up on this screen here, is basically plotting the amplitude in a microphone as a function of time. So what you're seeing there is basically the sound waves propagating from my mouth to the microphone over there and being analyzed by the computer. And you can see how the microphone is being pushed in and out as I speak. Now what we can do is look at what the sound wave looks like for a particular, for a particular pitch. So I can whistle into this microphone. And that's a little bit too high. So there you can see, I was trying to, trying to keep it steady, but you can see there was a sinusoidal wave. So up the top screen here, this shows you what the amplitude is as a function of time. And down here with this, in this bottom screen, we'll show you what the frequency is. Um, so if, if I whistle, you'll see one single peak down here. <laughs> and so this will tell you that that frequency is about 300 hertz. So if I increase the frequency, I increase the pitch. The pitch is what we perceive. And so the frequency increases. So we're going to be basically using this device to analyze music. And that's just sort of an introduction to what this device can do. Up here, this plots the amplitude. Down here, this plots the frequency. Now, in order to change the frequency on the strings, basically, all we have to do is that we change the length of the string. So if I have a string here, it plays a frequency, frequency note that you can hear. If I want to change the length, now you start seeing that the pitch goes up as the string gets shorter and shorter. Which is shown by this equation right, right here. <laughs> <laughs> so, so there, there, there's also the, the other method that was mentioned of changing the pitch of a string is to change the velocity of the string or change the tension. So one way of changing the tension of a string is to bend it up. You see? Okay, so I've increased the tension of the string, the pitch goes up. The other way of doing it is to change the tension by changing the tuning pegs. So, basically, the different uh, the fundamental harmonics that you hear, you notice that the strings all have even though they're the same length, they have a different pitch. Now, that's also due to the thickness of the strings. Here, we have the thinnest string. Then it gets a little bit thicker, a little bit thicker. So we have the lowest, lowest string. Now, there's a slight difference. Uh, there's a little bit of a trickery here in that the nylon strings, they're in the top three here. And then we have a wire-wound steel string giving me my lower, lower frequencies. Now, the addition, uh, the, the interesting thing about the strings is they also sound slightly different. Okay, and that's due to what we call timbre. Now, timbre is a superposition of a number of harmonics on top of the fundamental of, of the string. So if I play an e, e string, for example, okay, you hear the fundamental, but there are also higher harmonics involved in that to give it its characteristic sound. So Eric, you're going to pause right there. Why don't you play one note, and then just so they can see all the harmonics. Sure. Okay, go ahead. There you go. So here's the fundamental frequency, which would look like this. If you can see the guitar string up close, this one right here would be twice the frequency. This one would be three times the frequency, four times, five times, six times. So there's a whole bunch of different modes that are set on the So one of the tricks that we can do is that in case, uh, if we don't want to hear the fundamental, 
we can actually mute it. And so if we hit a nodal point on the string and put my finger on there, I end up muting the fundamental and then you start seeing, hearing the higher harmonics. Okay? So now the first harmonic is going to dominate and that's what you're hearing. If I change the position of, uh, to the next total point, now you hear the second harmonic. Third, fourth, fifth, sixth, okay? And so you can mute all of these harmonics. The other interesting thing about it is that the harmonic is in, just in one spot. In this case, it is in, in the second, uh, if you take a look at the uh, second harmonic or first harmonic, yeah. what you're seeing is this little, the, the big, big round one. Big one. Yeah. You see the nodal point here, that's what I'm muting, okay? So next, you're, putting, you're putting your finger right there. Right? Exactly. I put my finger right at this point and I, I, can, I can mute the fundamental. If I put my finger here or here, I will mute uh, the first or the fundamental and the first harmonic. And so if I do that, what you would expect is you hear the second harmonic here, you also hear the second harmonic there. Okay? If I do this, Okay. Okay. So there are four different areas that I can actually mute the instrument, and so if I'm composing a piece of music, there are a number of areas in which I can I can uh, play around with with the uh, the tonalities and the harmonics and whatnot. Now, timbre because it's also um, a, a <clears throat> part of the sound that's being generated by the instrument, I can also change the number of uh, higher harmonics by where I place my, my plucking. So if I, if, I, if I play over here, what you will hear is a very mellow sound, and so you'll hear um, the lower harmonics, basically. If I want to change that, play here, you'll hear a much brighter sound, and you'll see the higher harmonics being generated. You can see that on the screen there. So this is the first one, and then... And if I want to go really crazy, you can hear, again, a snap and much higher harmonics from the snap. Okay? Now, one more thing about the guitar is that its, it's shape is very interesting too. So, because we're vibrating the strings, um, most people are used to acoustic guitars, they play with picks. Classic guitars, we use our fingers, they're natural picks. And basically your finger acts as a slope and it allows the vibration to occur up and down. The sound goes into the sound hole, into the resonate, uh, resonant chamber, it comes out as the amplitude sound that you actually hear. Now the guitar is designed so that we have a lower region of resonance and a higher region of resonance. You can tell by the shape of the guitar. If I was to hit here, you hear a very, very low sound and much lower here versus here. Okay?